everyone, I'm Ranger Alyssa. And I'm Ranger Scott, and welcome to week two of Shenandoah National Park's Fall 2020 video series. We are with you every Thursday at 2 p.m. right here on our Facebook and our YouTube channel. And we are going to be bringing you a special topic, some travel tips, and if you have any questions during this video, please leave those in the comments below and we will be right back with you. We're also going to keep you updated with our peak check and we are uploading pictures on our website and all of our social media pages. And we want you all to share your pictures with us from what you're seeing in the park. So make sure you include a date and location on those. And sharing these pictures is one of our favorite things that we get to do, especially in these videos. So we've got this new thing that we created. <laughs> it's an amazing system for you to come up here at Pass Mountain, right where we are today. You can take your own pictures, upload it to a website, and we will be sharing the pictures that you take every week and we also want to share these incredible pictures that have been taken around Shenandoah National Park by our own photographers. So now we're going to jump right into our peak check for this week. Behind us you're going to see a few more pops of color, a lot of yellow and red specifically in this area from our goldenrod and even a little bit of Virginia creeper which is the red you can see. And then back on Neighbor Mountain there's more than just green now. I can kind of see some yellows from here. It's and starting. yeah, and some of those yellows are probably hickory trees or the birch trees. And we're starting to see oranges, and that's mainly from our sassafras saplings. And then again, the red is the Virginia creeper, and that's mainly found climbing up the trunks of the trees. And that's so beautiful. We hope that you guys can find that and take pictures of that and share with us. We love to see it. And then another thing that's going to start changing are our oaks and our maples, and those are in the higher elevations, and those are our a montage of colors of yellow, orange, and red. They're so beautiful. Yeah, it's just beginning to start changing. Everybody wants to know when is the exact best time to come. Weather makes that a little bit difficult to really predict that precisely. So we've had a lot of different factors. We've had record heat this summer. We're having nice cold nights right now and sunny days like today. That's good for the trees that are turning red but that's a little bit different for trees that change into like yellows and oranges. Right. Those are just going to change based off of the sunlight, uh, the days getting shorter. So all these different factors make it hard to predict, but we definitely want to find out. Ranger Alyssa, when is the exact date and time and location when people will be able to see the absolute best trees uh, in, the, in, the, in the park? Thank you for asking, Ranger <laughs> I'm Scott. happy to do that, the advocate <laughs> of the people. Right. So it's really up to nature, guys. It's really, it's even too soon to know at this point. You're going to be noticing that in maybe the lower elevations we have some trees changing, but in higher elevations it might not be. It's all dependent upon weather and elevation. So many different factors go into it. And we kind of want you to adjust your expectations when you come visit the park. So you might be expecting this multicolored goodness all over the park, wherever you go. But really, if you just choose to go on a short hike or pull off to an overlook and you just see color in those sections, that's going to be all that you need. And that's, I mean, that's perfect for a short trip to Shenandoah. And we're actually going to toss it to Ranger Caitlin now. And she is going to bring us our special topic this week, which is what we were just talking about. How and why the leaves change color in the fall. And while Ranger Caitlin is talking, you'll be able to see some of the beautiful video that has been taken this week around the park. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Ranger Caitlin, and more than 95% of Shenandoah National Park is forested. Along the upper slopes, along the mountain ridges, we have a dominant forest of red oaks. Along the middle slopes, we have a mixture of hardwood forests, that means uh, birch and ash and maple trees. And then along the lower slopes, along towards that valley, are yellow poplar forests that flourish. So as the days get shorter and the nights get cooler, the temperate deciduous forests of Shenandoah National Park begin to put on a show. The trees, to prepare for the cold and short days of winter, go into a period of dormancy. So to prepare for that winter time during the fall, they go through a process called leaf senescence, which makes the pretty colors that we enjoy. During the fall months, they begin to slow the production of chlorophyll, which is the main component of turning sunlight into glucose, or energy for plants and for the trees. As they slow the production of chlorophyll, 
we start to see the reduction of green, which is what we see when we see the leaves during the summer. So cold days, or short days, and colder nights are some factors that create leaf senescence. What are some other factors that make the leaves begin to change? Complex environmental factors all come together to create the peak leaf color time period, or when almost all of the leaves in, on the trees are no longer green and have changed into some sort of color. So colder nights, shorter days, the hormones of the trees, the genetic makeup of the individual tree as well, all are factored in to when leaves begin to change their colors. In Shenandoah National Park, elevation also plays a factor of when leaves begin to change, as well as the latitude of where they're at from north to south. So elevation restricts what type of trees grow, like we've talked about earlier, the upper slopes being red oak forests, the middle slopes being a mixed hardwood forest, and the lower slopes being yellow poplar. The elevation of the mountain re uh, restricts how much precipitation happens in certain areas, the amount of sunlight, the temperature, all of those factors take into, are taken in when the, leaves, when the trees decide to start changing colors and begin to slow that production of chlorophyll. At Shenandoah, the lower slopes on the northern end of the park are usually the first to start changing. And then slowly it will make its, the leaf will, color will start to make its way up in elevation and also south as well in the park. To get the best colors for any fall, you need cool, crisp, sunny days and cold nights. We need some sunny days in the fall to help produce a little bit of sugar production, create just a little bit of chlor chlorophyll in the leaves, but then in the wind at night, have colder nights because then it slows the abs absorption of that chlorophyll. If there was no green chlorophyll in any of the leaves that we saw all throughout the year, they would actually be the colors that we see in the fall. Those other colors are different compounds in the leaves. They're just overshadowed by the chlorophyll, the green. So as the production of chlorophyll begins to diminish and go away, that's when we start to see the other colors, the other compounds pop out and show themselves. Carotenoids are the compounds that make carrots orange and in trees, the leaves yellow. Reds and purples are created from the anthocyanins compounds in the leaves. So as the chlorophyll, chlorophyll fades away, these other compounds start to show themselves more. Shenandoah National Park and other national parks throughout the U.S. are here to protect the environment and, protect, and to protect natural processes like the leaf color change in the fall. And these places can't be here today without visitors like you who come and visit these places and enjoy the views and support them. So thank you for joining me, Ranger Caitlin, at Shenandoah National Park. I hope you enjoy the views, but always remember to leave no trace. Thank you very much, Ranger Caitlin. We are so excited to have you come into the park this year and enjoy the beauty of Shenandoah National Park, but we want to remind you to recreate responsibly. One aspect of that is drones. We want to remind you that drones are prohibited in all national parks. If people are coming out into Shenandoah National Park and they're trying to get away from the city life, but they still hear that whirring buzz of a drone flying overhead, you can understand how that would take away from their experience. So that's one reason why drones are prohibited here in the park. Exactly. And we also want to remind you of one of our picnic area and campground regulations is to keep your fire and the park built fire grates. Those are there for a reason. We want you to use them and make sure you use them responsibly. And then when you're done with your fire, make sure you, it is fully extinguished. And that might mean bringing an extra bucket or maybe an empty milk jug so you can fill water and extinguish it fully before you leave that area. Another thing you don't want to leave behind is your food. We do have black bears in the park and they love food and they have that keen sense of smell and they will sniff it out. So make sure that you are either bringing your own trash bag and packing it away and taking it with you to throw it away later or that you find a bear proof dumpster to throw it away in. 
Remember, it's very easy to social distance here in a huge national park, yeah. but we are still <laughs> living in a pandemic. So if you have to go inside of a building, please remember to bring and wear your masks. Absolutely. And if you want to know the hours of our buildings, such as our visitor centers or our gift shops, go to our website in the Know Before You Go page and you can find them there. And hike planning. We really enjoy different hikes in the park and they are great recommendations on our website and our app. And one way to plan those is by either printing them out from our website and having those ready to go or by using our app and you can download the offline content so you have that information ready to go when you need it. Yeah, you always want to have a plan A and a plan B to be able to avoid crowds. We have a secret. Uh, if one overlook or one hike is crowded, most likely there's one just down the road that's going to be a lot less crowded. So just continue down the beautiful Skyline Drive and you'll be able to find an equally beautiful view with right. much less of a crowd. Yeah, so if your plan A, B, and probably plan C hike might be Old Rag or White Oak, <laughs> maybe that's not a great idea. And we are trying to keep you updated as much as possible with the status of the parking lot and the trailhead. And we are putting those on our social media pages, such as Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And we've also done the same thing for our campgrounds. So if you're coming into the park and you're expecting to stay in a campsite that weekend, make sure that you check our social media to make sure there's an area for you. And then one other way to avoid crowds is by using our southern entrance station. So that means going to Rockfish Gap or Swift Run Gap. Definitely. And if you want to swiftly run through the entrance stations, <laughs> a quick way to do that is to just log on to recreation.gov and you can download passes from that website. Great. So we are going to wrap it up now, but we are excited to bring you um, Mara's Meadow Walk, Ranger Mara's Meadow Walk next week. So we hope that you tune in for that. We'll see you then. Yep.